Alright, I think we are live, so... Hello everyone, I'm Kiwami. Uh, I'll be running Shantae and the Fire Scars today. Shantae is... I'm a Tridvania game. I think a lot of people might know this game. For a lot of reasons. And one of the reasons that I do know this game is because of the amazing soundtrack. Actually, I really enjoy the soundtrack for this game. And what is this game about? You know, we have Shantae. Shantae is the protagonist of this game. And she has no powers in this game. But instead of powers, we get amazing pirate gear. And that's what we are going to use on this run. We are going to rerun pirate mode out of bounds. So I'm gonna start shortly. I'm just gonna make a, a thing in my timer here. Us. So we don't get to see red splits during the run. I should have done this earlier, but okay. Now we're good. So let's go. Three, two, one. Here we go. So Right off the bat, we have all those cutscenes. In this game, you have a button to skip cutscenes, which we are going to use. If you press star, you can skip cutscenes, and I ended up pausing the game because there was no cutscene playing. So, on this game, on the beginning of the game, we have the burning town, uh, which is not burning this time. On the previous games, it was. So, I mean, I think that's why we call it burning town. I mean, there's a few places in this level that are burning, but it's not really a burning town, but they kind of wanted to keep the tradition from the previous games. So, what you guys are seeing now is the pirate gear, and okay, I just killed myself because I want to show you guys the pirate gear again. So, basically in this game, we have the cannonball, we have the scimitar, and you know, that death was really unfortunate. I hope nothing like that happens in the run. We have the risky boots which gives us the ability to dash and right now I'm setting up for a trick called the risky shuffle. So in this game whenever I'm holding a direction I'm gonna get a timer going on and this timer is going to give me a, a boost of speed and I can manipulate it by, by jiggling to the opposite direction by doing that we can use the risky shuffle and here we have a skip we can jump on top of our friends and this saves one second you know not talking to your friend is in this game it saves one second and now i'm gonna just jump here for no reason you can literally buffer an input after every cutscene which is pretty neat now we have ammo baron this guy has some really heavy rng this is a pretty good rng so far he gave us the red ball and I'm going to use the bike ball against him because it increases the damage that we are going to deal per second on him and we want to do a specific amount of damage so we can kill him in less cycles this is a pretty good RNG so far that's really generous of him I think he saw me dying on the on the beginning of the first of the first stage and he was like okay I'm gonna give you a good RNG so you can compensate for those 10 seconds that you lost on the early game that's probably what's going on here. So now we've defeated Ammo Baron, but interesting thing about this game, on the story of the game, Ammo Baron, he bought the city. The city belongs to him, and we are preventing him from destroying his own city, and that's illegal. So we got the court summons, because the court wanna talk with us. And here's the, like, the ex-mayor of the, the city. I really don't know why he sold his city to this guy, but ah, it's just weird. So now we have the bathtub, and a funny thing about the scene is that Shantae is taking a bath, and then she noticed, okay, I don't have a bathtub. And then she realizes that she she got trapped by her by the villain of this game, which is Risky Boots. But something wrong is happening here. Those guys are risky boots. 
men and they are getting they are transforming into those kind of things and you know greasy boots know that we know how to fix this i guess and she wants us to help her so we're gonna use our not so magical powers to kill this enemy and i'm failing a little bit at it but it's fine this guy is, is very much rng he's going to the right is not the worst rng ever but i was I wasn't able to get the last hit on him. So now we got the lamp. The lamp, we can use the lamp for two things. Uh, in this game, we can use it to suck dark magic. And we can also use to suck money. And that's the only use that we are going to have for the lamp. Because we are not going to gather any more dark magic. Outside of this one, we are running any percent. So we are not going to have more dark magic in the run. Which leads to a lot of interesting skips. So right now what I'm going to do, I'm going to save. Because you're, like, you have to save. Uh, if you don't save in this, in this game, on this first area, this NPC is not going to let you go. He's going to say something like, well, did you forget to save your game? And you will not be able to pass. So now, uh, this is a little bit of RNG involved. I want those enemies to drop me a lot of items. And I just got a super bike ball from that guy, which... Something pretty interesting, that means I'm going to have more damage. To... To, to the bosses on the late game. Our only source of damage in this game is going to be the items we are going to gather from enemies. If we don't get those items, we are going to have to buy them. And buying items not only costs money, but it also costs time because we need to shop. So now this is another instance of RNG. Those snakes, we want them to drop flash pops. We need three of them for the zombie kids, but we also need a lot of them for the out of bounds. Because, you know, this is the out of bound category, we are going to use out of bounds. So, set up an out of bound in this game, there's a pretty interesting way to do it. I'm going to explain it when we are, when you get to, when you get there. But other than that, I'm just risky shuffling my way around here. Gonna also grab this map, it's an important story item, I need to grab it. We got a travel brochure, so I might... Go talk to Squid Baron. Like Squid Baron, like his story, he is sad because he doesn't know where to go. He's a boss in all the Shantae games, and in this game, he's like, okay, I'm not a boss in this game. What should I do? And then we give him the travel brochure, and he's like, okay, I think I'm gonna travel. I'm just gonna. Okay, I got nine flash pops. That's pretty good, actually. So, okay, we got a royal gate key. Now we are going to the to the royal palace. So, an interesting thing about this part here is that there is an NPC stuck inside here because Polo, which is one of our friends, he he is the the guy that fixes the door, and apparently he ended up fixing the door and making the door get stuck. I think he didn't fix the door at all, he just broke it somehow. I think it's... Yeah, I don't I don't really know, it's just... I think he's not really that good at what he does. But yeah, now we got everything that we want here. And we are going back. We got the travel map, which means that we can go to the next area now. So we might as well talk to Risky Boots, which is now our friend. But before doing that... I'm not only going to pass through this area again. I'm gonna try to kill as many enemies as I can so I can get more drops. So I'm gonna see if I can get it. I missed a couple enemies. Alright, I got a monster milk, which is pretty good. Again, it's a damage dealing item. We want all those monster milks that we can gather during the run. Now we're going to talk to Sky. Sky gives us the library card so we could go to the palace. And since we got we gave her the library card back, she she gave us 100 monies because she knew that we needed. Now I'm going to buy 
buy some specific items. Uh, actually, four potions, two, three fire flares, and one super pipe ball. Because we need them to the run. The potions are going to be used on the out of bounds. I'm going to talk about them shortly. Let me do them. So now this is Salava Island. This is the first place that we get to see the difference between a no out of bound run and an out of bound run because of the route. Uh, we are going straight to the goal. I'm gonna kill this mermaid here so I could get a chance of getting of getting a bubble shield. Unfortunately, I didn't get it. So. What I'm going to do now is called the Potion Drop. So the Potion Drop in this game is an out of bound. Whenever I use a potion, I can ignore collisions. If I use a potion while triggering a, a level transition, I can ignore collision. And we are going to abuse that once more in this area and that's why I'm saving. There's two out of bounds back to back and if I miss one of them I'm gonna soft lock the game so I'm gonna be really careful here with my decisions so I might as well save and let's go we're going to get money here as well we got all of out of bounds which is pretty cool and I'm gonna do a small optimization here I'm gonna land on the on the cage and I'm going to shoot it so there's another out of bound that I can do here but I'm not going to do it for marathon safety, which is called the wet man skip. You see, those guys are the wet men. And you can skip those guys by doing uh, a potion drop as well. But we are not going to do that for marathon safety. Because this cuts an auto potion. I, I want to keep this auto potion until the end of the game. Just for safety, I can die to any boss at any point, and I don't want that to happen. So, let's just go for that extra marathon safety, you know? Yeah, now we have the first boss, which is Cyclops Plant. There's a quick kill that we can do here, we can jump and use the scimitar that way. It's pretty simple. And this is the first phase of the boss. We can do the same thing with the eyes. Let's hope I can do it. Okay. Oh, it should be fine. Yeah, that was good enough. You can actually won't cycle the eye if you get like a good pixel to do the pogo. But yeah, that, that was the first dungeon already. So now we are going to the next dungeon, we are going to get another map every time we beat the stage. And I'm sorry for the dogs, like my dogs are kind of mad at something today, but it's fine. They are okay, don't worry about them. So now we have, we are going to use the fire flare, that's the reason we got some of those, so we could use them to go back to the ship. So it's faster. So now we are going to Spider Web Island. And Spider Web Island has one of the I think it was it's the most like annoying sections casually and on the speed run is as annoying as casually to be honest. Which is the run run rock tops sequence. Unfortunately there is no way we can skip run run rock tops in this game. So now we have the ghosts. Uh, I'm gonna be really careful here because the ghosts are RNG and they can appear whenever they want. So we don't want that to happen. So now we got this item. It's a fossil. Kinda looks like a mask. Maybe it is a mask. But we're going to discover this later in the game. So now let's go. Let's do more risky shuffles here. Gonna face a few more ghosts here. I'm gonna be extra careful to not take damage from none of them. Uh, okay, I missed the risk shuffle, but it should be fine. I'm gonna do a funny glitch here. Kante is now invisible. Actually, she's always invisible in this cutscene because she only appears after a while. But your ghost is still there. 
So yeah, now we have Ronan Rachetops. And Ronan Rachetops is... Like, if we, there's no way we can speed up this part. We can, we just need to carry Rajatops all the way back to her home. This is a, around 4 minutes of straight up walking with the zombie girl. And there's a lot of dangerous things here. All those hands, they are insta-kill. If we get hit by one of them, we are gonna go back to the, the checkpoint, which is in the beginning of the, the area. Not on the beginning of the area, but at the beginning of the, the screen. So, I'm gonna do a small optimization on those big enemies. I'm gonna go very close to them. And it, it saves like 4 seconds. But I'm going for it because I practice it. And I think I'm confident enough to do it anyway. But if I miss one of those things, I'm just gonna die and go back to the checkpoint. It's no big deal. Yeah, it's a really good music, by the way. This Rama Ratchet Tops is one of the best music in the game. And I also wanna have a I also wanna give a huge shout out to Jake Kaufman, dude. The, the, this guy is a legend. He knows how to bluff some really good champs. Like seriously, that guy deserves some love. Like please listen to Jake Kaufman music. Great musician. And you know that's the sellout for him. He's really good at what he does. Oh yeah, now we have more of this. We have those graves. Uh, I wanna be careful because there's only a few graves that have enemies on them. So I'm gonna have to... Ah, okay. Ah, I had to say it. Okay. It's fine. It happens every time in a while, I forget what are them. Yeah, that's the way you do this section. Like, I was just telling, like, I was just showing how to do the wrong way. So you guys could see the difference. And now that's the grave section. Now we have those kissing robots. And... Yeah, I call them kissing robots. I don't know what are their names, but you know what they do. They wanna try to kiss you, but their kisses are deadly. Don't wanna touch them at all. So now let's just be careful here. Okay, now I'm just gonna go up here. Get those two guys. And now this one is pretty free. It's just holding it to the right and jumping. There's no challenge in this last one. It should be okay. So now we have more graves. Gotta be careful with those. I, I already had a lot of good runs killed by the graves. Not gonna lie, I, I got my runs buried right into those graves. Every time. So now we have this very weird enemy. It's very... I don't know, it's... It's just an, it's a, 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 a normal enemy on a video game, and I just got killed by it. Alright. Alright, I'm gonna be really, really careful. I'm gonna wait for an extra cycle here, I don't really care. I got better RNG, he, sh he chose two, two of those things. You can also jump on this enemy, but it saves like one second, and if you, if you miss the jump, you're gonna die. You don't want that. Now I think this is the... If I remember correctly, this is the last section for the Roman Rush Tops screen. Uh, I'm gonna be extra careful on the end of this area. Because if, I'm, if I miss something there, I'm probably gonna die and I'm gonna go back to the beginning of this part here. So I'm gonna be careful here to not mess up. Pretty badly. Gonna wait for a little bit. There's no rush. There we go. <laughs> exactly. They were pretty much. Now I'm gonna make this bad bite because he bites, you know. It is not really that dangerous. You can just jump over it. No big deal. And now, just in time, 
we are on the we are going towards the second dungeon of the game already and this game has some really fast paced dungeons the reason for it is because we broke every single segment of this game because of we out of bounds now we have Poe remember the squid oil that we got from from the squid guy he gave this to us and then we can fix this guy car and he's gonna give us a ride because it's pretty gentle and this ride is going to be useful later in the game when you have to backtrack to this area to grab a few items not actually a few items I'm going to grab only one item actually two depending on the RNG that depends on the route as well okay now there's a voice inside there saying for us to bring more things to it so we are going to enter here gonna start up with a risky shuffle gonna go down here oh I grabbed it on accident shout out to the pro controller d-pad by the way those amazingly good vertical inputs out of nowhere So now I'm going to save again. So uh, what we are going to do here, we're gonna do another out of bound. So normally in this area we would have to grab some keys and enter doors but you know we can fly and there's no need for keys when we can fly. Alright that's the out of bound. I did a safer strat there, I used the the hat to fly instead of just letting Shantae flow fly all the way through. More safer to do it that way, and and not and not uh, not that not at all. This is the second dungeon. Unfortunately, we get to skip the princess dungeon, which is pretty sad. But it's not my favorite dungeon anyway. We get to skip it. I'm sorry to disappoint you guys. But yeah, now I'm gonna use a super bike ball. The super bike ball is made to do more damage to the boss. We could use a monster milk on it, but I'm gonna save it for later. So what I'm going to do here, I'm gonna do the most optimal strat. Since I can do it, I have the the health for it, I have an auto potion in case I missed it and I'm just gonna do it there we go this is the this, that was a really good impress spider this strat is pretty consistent you, you, if you do it you don't have to do with the bad RNG on the spider at all but yeah this is pretty much the mandatory spooky stage so now we have tinker bats I don't know, if we do get a little bit underestimate, I could maybe show the oh, yeah. uh, like the temple of the princess if you guys want to see it. Like just a brief show of it, but I, I don't know, if we do have time for it, I don't know how this run is going to go. Like a lot of things can happen, a lot of soft slots can happen, I hope they don't happen. But again, this game has a lot of potential to soft lock. But yeah, now we have 10 line island. Uh, I'm gonna do another risky shuffle here. I'm gonna hold, go all the way to the right with our scimitar. And I got bubble shield monster move. Okay, that was really good. I'm gonna stick some money here. Now I need a few uh, uh, more extra money for later in the game where we need to buy some items. Okay, stick a bike ball. Another one, please? Oh, just normal pipe balls. Okay, I'm gonna have to grab this extra money here. And now we got a sword, a very suspicious sword. Maybe it belongs to someone, and you know, we have to get it because it's a story item. Let's hope for more super bike balls here. Uh, you, you know, let's just. No, no more super bike balls. Uh, okay. It's okay. It happens every time. I'd never get a good RNG there. So getting one super bike ball there was absolutely something else. So this girl that I'm killing, the scorpion girl, she can drop quite super bike ball. 
and I'm really desperate for super bike balls right now. But I have, I have some. It should be fine. Now we have the, like in this part. Normally, I, I saved for a reason because I can soft lock the game with the next trick, and I don't want to do it. But at the next session, we are going to do. We don't have to go to the Temple of the Princess. Instead, we are going to do uh, Out of Bound. So, what I'm going to do here, I'm gonna go all the way to the left. I'm gonna use a potion, and we are on Out of Bound state. So, I'm just gonna whip all my way to the, to the right here. I'm gonna enter the purple block. And now I'm gonna roll left, right, and there you go. The block, the block is broken. So I had a lot of struggle when I started learning this game with the purple block. Not gonna lie, this block is the reason why I hate purple. But I ended up learning a way, a consistent way to deal with the purple block. But yeah, unfortunately, we don't get to see the fake princess. And there's a downside for that. If we don't do the the temple of the princess. We get, we can crash the game if we do try to go back to the temple by normal means. So when I finish the stage, I need to have a fire flare to go back to the beginning of the level. Otherwise, I would soft lock the game, and I've missed the risky dash. Okay, should be fine. Those guys have a small chance to drop monster meal. There's also another potion drop that I can do here, but I'm probably not going to do it because it doesn't save that much time. And I also like to to go for the extra the extra items here. But yeah, we didn't got any. Fine. I'm gonna kill all those guys. There's also a cricket here. No, it's not a cricket. It's I don't remember what it is. Maybe he... Not a cricket. I don't know. But yeah, we got all those enemies. Those girls also have a chance to drop monster milk. And we kind of want it. We have three pipe balls. Okay, I think we're pretty much set up, actually. Now, we can one cycle this press. But it's pretty hard to do. I missed it. It's pretty harsh to do the... You do it one cycle, but two cycles is pretty free. But yeah, now we are going to Squid Baron. I'm gonna grab all the health that I can here. Oh, I forgot to equip this. Okay. So now we are going to the boss, which is Squid Baron. You know, he he ended up realizing that his destiny as a character in the Shantae series is to just be a boss. And there he is. He wanna fight us. Because that's what he does in every single game. Oh, he's a praying mantis. Sorry, I'm terrible at knowing animal names. So now this is the best RNG we can get. The one that he's, he's eating is the one that we want every single time. So now uh, we have... Squid Baron 2.0, which his weakness is the scimitar, and we just do that, and there we go, there goes his armor. Now, I'm just gonna bounce off him because it deals more damage. It's a pretty easy boss to fight when you figure all his, his patterns. It's one of my favorite fights as well. He has some RNG, but you can consistently get it. And there we go, this, that was a Squid Baron. And now when we finish this level, we are gonna go back. We're gonna get Moodbog Island map, but we are not going to Moodbog Island yet. What we are going to do now, we are going to progress the game's story. Because what we did here, we did a sequence break. So basically, we, we skipped a huge part of the story of the game. <coughs> We're going, to, we're going to see an NPC now that, like, he is, he's petrified now. Uh, he shouldn't be petrified. Actually, we are not going to see him again, uh, him now, but okay. Now I'm gonna book by a potion and four fire flares. I don't need anything more than that. 
progress now, but we are going to talk with Bolo. So, Bolo is on, on, on the workshop. We're going to give the foster to him. And then he's going to be, okay, I'm, I don't know what this is. And then we give him the x-ray specs. And he's like, oh, I feel smart now. I, I'm, I think this is a death mask. And then he gives us, and he gives it to us. And now we can progress to, to the main story of the game. So now we're going to go to Mikbuck Island now that we have the mask. Uh, <clears throat> now that we have the death mask, we can go to this spooky area because you know there's an NPC here that if we try to talk with him without being spooky enough, he gets mad at us and say, "Okay, go back. You're not spooky enough." Something like that. Okay, I've missed it entirely. I'm gonna try my best to recover from this. So, what's my favorite Shantae game? Or, uh, so, my favorite one is pretty much this one. Okay, I'm gonna be extra careful here. This can happen a lot of times, but luckily, it was near at the end of the, of the stage. I'm gonna save here. So, but I really enjoy Pirate Curse. Pirate Curse is my favorite Shantae game. Okay, that's not the way you're supposed to do this stage, by the way. It's pretty sloppy, but I got a monster milk, so it should be good. I'm getting a lot of monster milks. So now there's the spooky NPC. He's like, what is this? You got a death mask. I don't really think that the name of the item is death mask, but... Kinda looks like it, and he says, okay, you can go. This is some kind of... this is the village of Lost Souls. And this place is a pretty straightforward dungeon, I would say. What we need to do here, we're gonna have to gather three coins so we can play with three NPCs. So we are going to get this first one, this is the blue coin. I'm gonna grab the blue coin and I think the top on the top there's the red or I think it's the green one. So I don't need any more money now, so I'm not going to grind for extra money on this stage. Like I have all the items that I need to have for the late game. I also have a super uh, uh <clears throat> sorry. Uh, I also have a super monster milk which I'm going to use on the next boss. So let's go down here, I'm gonna be extra careful with the ghosts. They can appear anywhere, it's pretty much RNG where they are going to appear and there's almost no time for you to react whenever they appear. So I think we have enough food, I'm gonna show a pretty interesting glitch now. I'm gonna grab the item and I'm going to eat something and the animation for the item grab is gone. There is no music for it because we cancelled it by eating. A very interesting glitch that we can do to like save some frames. We gotta save those extra seconds because we have the power to, we have the items to, so why not? So now here we go, let's talk to NPCs. So we are going to play heads or tails. And the best RNG is the one that all of them gives you heads. Uh, is this? Oh no, you did it. Oh man, don't do that to me. So there's a thing. If they give you the, a bad RNG three times, I think it's three or four times in a row, they are going to give you the first option that you choose every time. So it's if you miss it a lot, you can <clears throat> you can just choose the same option all the time and you're gonna get the same result. Now we got the hopeful flame. Uh, we got the hopeful flame from that NPC which absolutely doesn't look like Rochitops, which is the girl that we carried before in the game. Now we got the hopeful flame, we're going to light this campfire. And after we light the campfire, there's a guy that he's going to give us the mainly musk. The reason we want a mainly musk is to go down here so we can 
go to the next, like to start the next dungeon. Yeah, we have like a dungeon inside a dungeon, which is pretty neat. So now we have, we are on the... Yeah, pretty much RNG. There's no manipulation on it, unfortunately. So now this area here, I'm gonna try to optimize my movement with all those those hats and scimitars. Uh, there's no risk of soft lock here, by the way. This area here is pretty safe. There's literally no way to soft lock in this dungeon because there's no out of bound here. What I'm going to do here is pretty much it. It's pretty much identical to the to the no out of bound run. You can do this in any run you. You want you're running if I think even on normal you no you cannot do it on normal so there we go that was this dungeon which is pretty short so all right let's go we are going to face a very interesting boss So, we have Dagron, massively misspelled monstrosity. I can do an early hit on him, so he always going to gain from the left. Uh, I'm missing it. Okay, uh, let me... I'm gonna have to eat a lobster tail, because I missed it. So, this fight is pretty consistent if you don't miss a single hit on him. But if you miss, you're pretty much... Lost when it comes to the run, so every cycle makes him go faster, so we gotta be aware of that while fighting him. Sometimes pretty hard to avoid his attacks, but okay, there was there were only two hits left, so it should be fine. We have some foods. So no big deal. So now we have the third shopping of the run. But we are not going to do it because we don't need to. We are going to skip the third shop in the run. We don't have to shop this time. Like we have to go back. So by going by going back, we have to like go to the to a few places to progress the story of the game. And yeah, Shante for Smash, absolutely. That's my dream, dude. I would play Smash every day if I did get Shante on it. Unfortunate. It's unfortunate that we don't get it. Well, at least I got to play with Mega Man. Alright, now that we're going here... I'm gonna... Uh, I'll, okay, I was trying to use an item, but I highlighted the wrong item. And there we go, I was just there pressing the use item button without having a result. So, yeah, now we are going to Frostbite Island. So, Frostbite Island is... There is another instance of Out of Bound in this stage. I'm going to be jumped the whole time, because those slopes slow you down when you're going up them. Instead of having ice physics, we have slopey slope physics, I would say. That's the one way to put it, slopey slope physics. So yeah, now let's go to the right here. Uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to talk with Bolo again, because Bolo is... Okay, I'm... You know, I'm actually going to save here. I'm gonna tell the reason I'm doing that is... Because there is a way to soft lock the game randomly, like by doing absolutely the intended thing, you have to do it on the on the next screen. That's why I'm saving. I'm scared. I'm afraid that I would soft lock. I hope this doesn't happen. So yeah, it's in this area. You can soft lock here. Alright. Oh no. That was not good. Ah, uh, it's okay though.
So I'm gonna be really careful climbing here. This is the soft lock potential, by the way. If you grab that that chain on the wrong way, you can soft lock. So now I'm going to save again because there's another soft lock potential, and the soft lock potential comes from us breaking the game this time. So now let's go for here. Oh, I used the potion. Okay. Uh, I was not meant to use a potion in here, but it's okay. Now I get to see how to do this out of bound with a potion, guys. That's a new way to do it. I mean, the world record has to do it because he actually gets really unlucky with the full drops. So a huge shout out to him, by the way. The world record is 40 minutes from Tiki uh, Tiki Y. Really great Shantae runner, by the way. Highly recommend everyone checking it out. Yeah, it, he runs a lot of Shantae games. It is a sick runner in all of them. So now that we now that we have like we triggered a story thing, I'm gonna go back to the spider web island and I'm going to basically talk to our guy Bo again and he's gonna give us a ride because he's pretty cool the true gentleman so now we're going to talk to this guy so we got a wanderer soul in the like in the purgatory this is the Spirit of Joe, which is an NPC that you guys are going to map now because we skipped this whole story. Now, the, the zombie guy is going to give us the Fire Flare. I'm going to use it as well. So, I say that I was not going to shock in this run, but unfortunately I have to. Unfortunately, I have to shock. Yeah, so I'm sorry about it. I was going to skip this whole shopping sequence, but we are not going to do that because I had to to buy a potion because I wasted I wasted a potion on that on that dungeon. Unfortunate. So now here we go again to the right. Uh, we are now going. To get another important story trigger, we are going to talk with this guy. Uh, you know, he's pretty f familiar. It's absolutely not him, man. His grandson. Who would say that he's him, man? You know, it's just grandson. Okay, now I'm gonna release the flare. On a very particular place. So now that we have all the story triggers that we need to progress into the game, we are going to go to talk to Sky. And this is this is his boyfriend, her boyfriend, by the way. They got some story. He got petrified out of nowhere because we skipped the whole scenes that he got petrified. And now he's gonna go back to the job because we got his toe back. And now we also have the target module that we got on the previous island. So we are going to fire the module. But since the module is not working properly, it's gonna fire on a weird place. And that weird place is the place that we are going to get the next dungeon, which is pretty short actually. Like I hope you guys paid attention to all the tricks that I already used in the run. If you guys did not, you guys are going to see it one more time. We are going to see all the tricks that we already did in the run on this dungeon, so it should be fine. Just a uh, like recapitulation of all the glitches that we already did during the game. So now let's. I'm just gonna save the game. We never know what can happen here. There's two out of bounds in a row here, so if I do soft lock, I will be 
Run will be pretty much over. So there we go, that's the first out of bounds. And there's the second one. I'm gonna do a full drop. I'm gonna jump. Gonna use another food while mid-air. Gonna hold left. And I'm gonna go here. Okay, I need to be on a very specific place to use that potion. There we go! That was pretty nice. So what I did there, I did a full drop, I flail, and I used another food to stop my flying, and then I used a potion to reset my auto thought state. Okay, this is the hardest boss in the game, by the way. This is RNG the boss. Okay, middle and front. Pretty, pretty hard battle. It's hard because of the RNG, pretty much. Uh, and I never remember what I'm doing. I think it's in the back. Oh my god. Okay, my shield is going to wear off. Oh my god. What am I doing? Okay, I'm gonna concentrate here. I'm gonna go a little bit safe. That's the third cycle, we don't wanna see it. Yeah, it's the middle. You know, I gotta hit the middle, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, middle. Let's hope for a front. Ooh, there we go, thanks game. Yeah, this fight took too long. Not gonna lie, it took me more than I thought it would take. Yeah, pretty sad RNG, and also sad execution actually. I, I messed up. I'm sorry. It happens. This fight takes way more, it's way less time to complete than normally. So now that we finished the boss, we have the trigger for the next area. We are pretty much going towards the end of the game already. So now we have the Great Pirate Cove. The Lonely Grave. This is where the Great Pirate King is. <clears throat> the, the Pirate King is... He... He's resting. Let's put it that way. Like, I don't, I mean, I, like, he's not really dead. Like, he's still there. He's just resting for a bit. That's pretty spooky, actually. I just love that his sprite is way more spooky than his... Than his art. Than his mugshot. So, there we go. This is the Lonely Grave. Very hard island. So, now we have... The last... Dungeon of the game. I'm just gonna go straight forward here. I don't really need anything else from those enemies. I can just go straight forward. Oh, oh, oh okay, 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 okay. Give me a second. Give me a second. I need to save because the next trick is going to. Well... It's not Metroid, but it's Metroidvania. Metroidvania inspired game. So there we go, now we have the last dungeon. So the last dungeon is a pretty huge dungeon. It can take up to 8 minutes to beat this. But that is in a normal playthrough. 
this is how we do this dungeon with out of bounds. So I'm gonna go a little bit safe here. I'm gonna wait for a little bit. I really don't wanna soft lock this. But yeah, this dungeon is pretty huge. There's a lot of rooms here, but we don't get to see them in the speedrun. Pretty much. So this is the Pirate Master, Scourge of Second Land. And what I'm going to do, I'm gonna wait for his first move, and I'm gonna use my items. So the best RNG we can have is the one that he always close to us. Whenever he teleports. Like this. Not like this. I had to use the total restoration because I took contact damage and I got insta-killed. Okay. That's kinda unfortunate. I forgot that I had no bubbles. Yeah, this is going to be kinda fun. Now that I'm thinking about it. Doing this boss fight without bubbles. You can get insta-killed by those things. I forgot to buy bubbles. Okay. Uh, okay. So. You know, we need a few more estimate times, so let's just... I'm just gonna do something here. I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna buy bubbles, you know? I just wanna show how this fight is supposed to go. I'm sorry about it. That was... <laughs> that was my mistake for not checking on my... My buying list. This fight is impossible without bubbles. By the way, there's also a backup. There's some backup money around here. But yeah, I'm gonna go a little bit overestimate. I hope you guys don't really mind that much. So let's just do a casual playthrough here and farm for items. So I'm really, I'm really sorry about it, but we, if you guys get to see this music again, so it should be fine. Maybe we can go like one or two minutes off the estimate. But I'm sorry about it. So I'm just, I'm gonna buy two. I, I could have bought it when I got the chance, but I thought I had two of them. I don't know what I did to my bubbles. There's no way you can fight that guy without- I mean, there's a way you can fight that guy with bubbles. That hard squid. So... Yeah, this can happen. Every once in a while, a runner forgets to buy her items and... Just get overestimated in the marathon. No big deal. This is going to be like a one or two minutes. I I think so. It should be fine. Just to keep, you know, it just to keep the the marathon on, you know, on a good schedule. So now we get to see the whole skip again. Let's just save in case something bad happens again. I'm really sorry about it, guys. This fight's going to take 
less than five minutes, I think. time that's overestimate which I'm pretty sorry about it but yeah that was Chante that was like I had a really good run but um <laughs> I forgot to buy bubbles that's how you mess up your run badly by not buying an item but you know it happens I was kind of nervous about showing this game off because this is a pretty dangerous game to show because there's a lot of soft spot potential everywhere. The game can even crash. But yeah, that was the Shantae run. Uh, I hope everyone is having a good marathon so far. You know, make sure to check out more of the runs on this marathon. Big Gaming is really they're making a really good marathon. You know, and that's and make sure to check this game as well. We also have a tutorial for it on speedrun.com. If anyone gets interested in running this game, yeah, I have, hope everyone have a good, a good time with the marathon. No matter the time zones, like I don't like to say like have a good afternoon because we have a lot of different, we have a lot of different time zones, but you know it's fine. Yeah, have a good day.